of civil rights and the mother of the freedom movement due to my role of not wanting to give up my seat because the white section of the bus was full. I did not give up my seat because I was tired. I was tired of giving in. I also did not want to give up my seat because I paid for it. And I took a stand to express the mistreatment as we people of color rode the bus on Thursday, December 1st, 1955. I was arrested but bailed out of jail that night. On Sunday, December 4th, 1955, the Montgomery bus was announced at black churches in the area with a front page article in the Montgomery newspaper to help spread the word on Monday, December 5th, 1955. 35,000 papers were passed out asking every Negro to stay off the buses in protest of the arrest and trial, the boycott lasted for 3,081 381 days. I raised world awareness of the plight of African Americans and the civil rights struggle. No one understood my action unless they realized the cup of endurance runs over and the human personality cries out, we as people of color cannot, can no longer take it. I sat so Martin could walk, so Barack could run, and Kamala could win. I died on October 24, 2005. I am Rosa Louise Macaulay Parks. <laughs> Man, while you're standing, go with me to 1 Peter chapter 2. Thank God for little Ivory, amen, for doing such a wonderful job this morning. Amen. Thank God for Mariah for keeping her company. <laughs> so, amen. And thank you, Miranda, for allowing them to come and share with us on this auspicious day as we recognize black history. Uh, normally, we would have a great and grand program, but thank God to COVID, things have been shifted. But we th still thank God for what has transpired this morning and for the contribution they made. Uh, thank God for Reverend Eddie, Nat Thomas, Elder Clown Stokes, Reverend Christopher Francis, and thank God for Pastor Quentin Washington for sharing with us this morning, and all of you God's choice children. 1 Peter chapter 2, I'm reading verse 9 and 10. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. God bless you. Thank you so much uh, for standing for the reading of God's word, and God's word is always true and rich. Let's talk about you matter to God. Amen. How many of y'all know that this morning? Amen. You matter. To God. I want you to know this morning, Bethlehem, and all those of me be watching and listening, that from the from the grave, from the cradle unto the grave, you matter to God. From the very first time breath came into your body, you matter to God. I want you to know this morning that God is concerned about you. Not only is he concerned about you, but God cares for you, and God want to caress you, and God want to be there for you and with you, because you matter to Almighty God. 
He wants you to make, he wants to make sure that all your needs are met. And I want you to know this morning that only God can do that. He wants you to know that your battles have been fought, your victory has been won. He has made a way out of nowhere for you. There's no weapon formed against you that's going to prosper. God wants you to know this morning that you matter to him. That's why he watches over us all night and why he did put angels around our bedside. That's why he wakes us early in the morning. He wakes us up. He starts us on our way. That's why he put food on our table. That's why he put clothes on our back. That's why he put money in our pocket. That's why he put bread in our body. Because you matter to him. It doesn't make a difference what the devil said, what the devil do, what he tried to do. I want you to know this morning that you matter to Almighty God. Why would he wake us up in the morning if we didn't matter to him? Why would he start us on our way if we didn't matter to him? I want you to know this morning that you matter to God. Maybe nobody else would tell you they love you, but God showed you he loved you. Maybe nobody will visit you when you're lonely, but God visits you when you're lonely. Maybe nobody will be there when you need him the most, but God say, I'll be there when you need me the most. Know why? Because you matter to God. How many of you matter to God? Yes, you do this morning. I want you to know that you matter to God. Your husband didn't tell you he loved you. That's okay. God loved you this morning. Your children didn't appreciate what you did. God appreciate what you did this morning. And that's why God wants you to know this morning that you matter to him. Too many times, too many times, too many times, too many times we allow the things of the world to dictate to us. Too many times we walk around with our head down. Too many times we walk around as victims and not those who are victorious because we don't know that we matter to God. Too many times we go on jobs and, and we walk in our communities as people who have no direction because we don't know we matter to God. Too many times we're killing each other and blacks killing blacks on the street every day. Murdering each other for no reason at all because they don't see that God say that they matter to him. And somebody had told them they have no value. But I want you to know this morning, wherever you are, whoever listening, that you matter to God. How do I know that? Because the Bible lets me know we matter to God. Because when you read 1 Peter, Peter just tells us so clearly that we matter to God, Elder Stokes. And if you don't know nothing else, if the newspaper don't tell you you matter to God, oh my goodness. If the magazine don't tell you something when you matter to God, the Bible lets us know we matter to God this morning. Because the Bible says, well, God so loved the world. Oh, my goodness. Why did that? Because we matter to God. First thing I want you to know this morning, three quick things. I'm out your way. I promise you, first thing, you are precious to God. Somebody say, I'm precious. You know, that was a song one time, Precious, Precious, Baby, you're mine. Oh, my God. I remember that song. But God is saying, not that kind of precious, oh man. God said, you're precious in my sight. And what, when you're precious in the sight of God, you're more precious than silver and gold. You're more precious than houses untold. You, you're precious to God because why this? God sees something in you because God sees something in you that the world may not see. God sees value in you. God sees the best in you. When everybody sees the worst in you. God said, why do you are precious to him? He always sees the best in us. Too many times, why do people of God, we allow people to define who we are. And I'm talking about as a race. I'm talking about as a race right now. Too many times we allow people to define who we are. You know, you know what you say? Well, you went to the wrong school. You live in the wrong neighborhood. You wear the wrong clothes. Your children went to the wrong school. You drive the wrong kind of car. Let me tell you something. It doesn't make a difference where you live. It doesn't make a difference what you drive. It doesn't make a difference what you wear. I want you to know God said you are precious to him. Don't you know there are people right, who's driving who is living better than people in Mercedes? Oh, y'all not. Yes, 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 I know that's the truth because sometimes the people in the Mercedes waking up wondering how I'm going to pay my bill and the people in the hoop say, how can I praise God? Y'all not hear me this morning. It's not the things that you have. Don't let those things have you. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. You want joy? Just go and praise God right now. Because you're precious to God. Don't you, don't you let people define you. Tell 
of who you are because of the school you went to, the clothes you wear, because you live in a gated, you don't live in a gated community. You come to Brentwood, I got a gate by my house. It's gated. And one thing I know, because of Jesus Christ, I don't need a security for you to come in. Y'all not hear me. You are precious to God. The Bible says, but you are chosen, chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Look, look how he defines us. He says, all he said, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You say a holy nation and a peculiar people. We are people like this who strive to do the things that are pleasing to God. It's, it, it, it's not living the same way I used to live. It, it's not doing the same thing I used to do. Paul said, Why does if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. And because why did we are precious to Almighty God? God said, Why did that we are a chosen generation? It doesn't make a difference what people think about us. God chose us. Amen, somebody. Y'all do know that, right? And what I've learned about God, God don't make mistakes. I, the people look, people tell me, oh, you're, you're a cursed race because of your skin color and all that. Let me tell you, we are not cursed, my friends. We are not cursed because why do we are wonderfully made. Oh, my goodness. God made us who we are. Amen, somebody. Then he said, oh, I love this one. He said that we are a peculiar people. People can wonder. How we can run and nobody behind us. How we can clap and there's no music. How we can jump for joy when it looks like things are breaking down all around us. How sometimes we cry is not tears of, of sorrow but tears of joy. How we can praise the God we can't see but yet we can feel. Somebody go catch that one. I don't have to see him to know he's up there. And because of all that God said you are precious to me. Somebody say precious. I want you to know this morning, you matter to God. First thing, God said, you are precious to God. Second thing, write this. You, write this. I want you to know now, you have a purpose for God. Everybody in this place, everybody in this place, everybody who's listening, everybody who's watching, every one of us who are children of God, we have a purpose. You know the worst thing in the world? For us to be a child of God and not know our purpose. Our purpose is to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And what I've learned, why then when praises go up, oh my goodness, blessing will come down. Our job, why this, is to praise Almighty God like we lost our minds. You know, you can't have a cute praise in a black Baptist church. Let me say it again. You cannot have a, a cute praise in the church. Well, you know, Pastor, I want to clap. We'll clap. Pastor, I want to dance. We'll dance. Pastor, I want to shout. We'll shout. Because that's what we do up in here. We dance, we shout, and we clap. Now, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise God. Because it's worthy to be praised. The psalmist said, from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sand, he's worthy to be praised. Peter said right here, Peter said right here, he said, Dad, you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. If you don't have no other reason to praise God, you can praise God for where he brought you from. See, see, a lot of times, right this, we, we, get, we get complacent and we get Alzheimer's when it comes down to remember where we come from. You know, I, I didn't catch all of it, but I caught the tail, of, the tail end of, of an outside toilet. Oh, yes, I did. I caught a piece of a channel pot. I caught a piece of that. And, and listen, now I can go in the bathroom in the home, but there are some in here who maybe, listen, didn't have that privilege coming up. That look, you can look in your look out your ceiling, look in the ceiling, you can tell whether it's night or dark. Oh my goodness. Well, you decorated your wall not with pen but with newspaper. Oh my goodness. Where your sheets was your curtains. Oh my goodness. Somebody talk to me. Where well, Sunday morning was with fried chicken and peas, and that's all you had. But thank God where he brought us from. Hallelujah. 
to somebody. And that's why I said, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would it be? We have to learn to praise God who has brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. David said, David said, I will bless the Lord. Come on, somebody. At all times. He said, his prayer shall continually be in my mouth. Because David said, look, there is not a time that God is not good to me. So since God is good to me at all times, I'm going to praise God at all times. Since God gave me a mouth to praise him, I'm going to use my mouth at all times. And why does that mean when others tell me, shut up, I'm going to shout a little louder. When others tell me, stand out, I'm going to stand up. When others tell me, keep still, I'm going to dance a little more. Because I realize how good God has been to me. We have to understand that God is still good. And our purpose is to praise him. All of us in here have, have something to praise God for. Just waking up this morning in our right mind, with our health and strength, that's something to praise God for. Although the body is aching, but I'm not dead. Oh my goodness. I'm making arrangements, but it's not funeral arrangements. That's something to praise God for. I don't have what I want to eat, but I'm eating every day. That's something to praise God for. Maybe I don't have a million dollars, but I got something to put in my pocket. That's something to praise God for. We have to learn to praise God in every and all situations. Somebody, why this? Somebody don't understand the importance of praising God. That means, why this? Letting the world know that whatever you're going through, whatever you have, wherever you're going, is only because of Jesus. How many only because of Jesus? Only because of Jesus. Somebody asked me, how did I get healed? Because of God. Oh, my goodness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How did you defeat your enemies? God did it. How did you make a way out of the way? God did it. And how did you find peace in the midst of your sorrow? God did it. And because of all of that, that's a reason to praise God. People won't believe your praise. But you still have to praise. You still have to praise. Don't worry with people on your left. Don't worry with people on your right. Don't worry with people in front of you. Don't worry with people ahead of you. All the hell you've been through. You've been through the storm and the rain. But you made it. You had all this in pain, but you made it. You got a reason to praise God. And don't you say, excuse me, if you want to praise him, I'll praise him all by myself. Let me get out of here now. I told you I'm going to be good today. I'm going to be good. I ain't going to keep y'all long. But I want somebody to know you matter to God. You matter to God. Don't you let people tell you you don't matter to God because of what school you went to or where you live at or what you drive or what you wear. God is not concerned with those things. That's things people look for. People looking for the accolades of man and not the pleasure of God. It's not about all those things. Oh, Pastor, I shop at Macy's. I never know unless I look at the tag. Amen, somebody. That's the only reason people know. Because when you show them the tag, it's not those things that make us. Because God is saying you matter to him. You matter to him. Because you matter to him, you are precious to him. He looks at you with an eye of compassion. Because you are more precious than their silver or gold. He holds you in his hands. Why this? No devil in hell can't pluck you out. You are precious to him. If you ever had something, a glass vase or something that was precious, and you hold it so pretty, Brother Virgil, you hold it so tight, you wrap it up, you make sure no harm come to it. If you almost drop it, oh, because why this? You don't want to bring it because it's valuable to you. That's how God is saying this morning. God said, when the devil tried to pluck out my hand, God said, no, I'm holding him too tight because he's valuable and he's precious to me. Then God said, you have a purpose this morning. Your purpose is to give God glory this morning. Now, I don't know what you come to do. I come to give God glory. Because I look at the, ca at the calendar. It was February 21st, 2021. I didn't think I was going to ever live to see this long. I remember the year Y2K, we thought we was going to die when the clock was going to come. But look where the Lord has brought us. He has brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Thank God for Jesus. The last thing I want you to know as we go home, you are the people of God. 
You are the people of God. You are the people of God. You matter to God because you are the people of God. The Bible says right here, verse 10, he said, which in times past uh, were not, you were not a people. You were not considered a people. You were not considered a people. He said, but now, but, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I want you to understand something. You were not considered a people. It wasn't that you was not a person or people, but you were not considered a person. You were considered, uh, what is chattel, property, and all that stuff. Where you was under bondage and un under taskmaster, you had to do certain things or else. And so they look at you as if you had no value, no voice, no say so. You couldn't vote where you want to vote. You couldn't vote. You couldn't drink where you wanted to drink. You couldn't eat where you want to eat. You couldn't live where you wanted to eat because you were not considered a people. And a lot of times we was under the, the suppression of the bondage of others. Why this? Who felt superior to us. Who felt that way that we were always subservient to them. But what they didn't understand, although they didn't consider us a people, God always considered us a person or a people. Because why did the Bible say when God said, let us make man, God didn't say let us make a black man or a white man. God said let us make man. The Bible said when God blew the breath of life in man, the Bible said God blew the breath in a black man or a white man. The Bible said God just blew the bread. The Bible said, why it is, when he blew the bread in man, man became a living soul. He didn't say a black soul or a white soul. All then God said, a living soul. So it's not what people think about us, it's what God has done for us. And I thank God that when God look at me, God don't look at color. Sometimes people get caught up on all this foolishness, whether God's a black God, whether God's a white God, whether God has blue eyes or blonde hair or nappy hair, that stuff is not important. Because when I see Jesus, I'm just going to say amen. Now, if you hanging your hat on what color he is, if you remember if he's black or white, when you get to heaven, if you get to heaven, if you're a black person and you're looking for a black God and he's not black, will you leave heaven? If you're a white person and you're looking for a white God and you get there and he's not white, will you leave heaven? I'm here to let you know those things are not important because God says he's not a color God, but he's a God of, of people because the Bible doesn't know that God loves all of us. He cares for all of us because somewhere along the way, people got to get this thing together and know that God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised. The Bible lets me know that we are the people of God because God loves all of us. God don't pick and choose if he's going to love the black better than the white. Or the white man the black. The, because the Bible says, for God so loved the world, and that world includes for everybody, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believing in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that whosoever, you can rewind the clock. It was your grandmother. It was your great grandmother. It was your great great grandmother. Maybe it was a slave. Maybe it was in bondage. Maybe it was on a plantation. But I'm here to let you know whether your ancestors live on a plantation, whether your ancestors couldn't vote or not, whether your ancestors worked in a cotton field, that stuff didn't matter. Because the only thing they know was right on King Jesus. They do stuff like that. They do amazing grace. How sweet the sound that said a wretch like me. They knew one day that they was going to go on from the outhouse to the in-house. They realized they were on a plantation down here. But they had a mansion up there. It's the good 
criticize you. You may scandalize your name, but I'm here to let you know you battle to God. They might tell you you're too black. They might tell you you're too white. They may tell you you're too fat. You're too skinny. But I'm here to let you know you battle to God. You may have a club, members only. That's okay. I belong to a family of God. And I have special rights. Special privileges, rights and privileges, you can't take from me. I want you to know this morning, you matter to God. He loves you this morning. He cared for you this morning. He sent Jesus for you this morning. He'll rock you when you get weary. He'll pick you up when you're down. He'll make a way out of nowhere. And he all right this morning. What a mighty God we serve. You matter to God. Jesus loved me. This I know. For the Bible. Tell me so. And what I love about it, I know I matter to them. I go through trials. I go through tribulations. I have ups and I love my head down. But one day, I say one day, because I matter to him, I'm going to stand before Jesus and all that the work I've done speak for me. And we're going to hear him say, Servant of God, well done. You've been faithful to a few things. I'll make you rule over many. This morning you matter to God. History books don't tell the whole story. History books don't tell the whole story. History book tells you how people are in bondage. It is good to read those things. But even in bondage, they was free. Because who the Son has set free. They were in physical shackles. Some of us are in spiritual shackles. They had hard taskmasters who oppressed them. We have a devil who's still doing the same thing. But if you remember Roots, all Kunta wanted was to be free because he realized this life I'm living is not the life God designed for me to have and just like Kunta wanted to be free we have to understand the life that we're living at times when we're disobedient to God is not the life God designed for us to have but one thing I remember mostly about Roots and every now and then it's good to remember those things. But we don't hang our hats on those things. We got to stop looking in the past and move forward. Because so much has transpired in these last couple years. But one thing I remember most about Ruth, when you look at all the things they went through, I remember Kunta took Kizzy. And he went out in the field. And he held her up. He said, Behold, the only one greater than you. He let them know, no matter where you go, what they do, what they say, there's only one person greater than you. And he lifted her up. And he introduced her to a God who loved her. And I want you to know this morning, Dr. Ann, no matter what people say about us, what they do us, how they criticize us, scandalize us, and try to hold us down. There's one who's greater than all of us. Come on, put your hands together.